Sophia, Captain Andrews. They say it all started in Egypt 2,000 years ago. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. An Egyptian tomb at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But I'm recording the events as they happened. Though there's no way I can record the human terror of those bizarre few days. And yet, it all started so simply. A stupid dull morning anchored in port. until she's fully loaded, you hear? Uh, Andy, my boy, it's good to see you. I'd offer you one, but I know how hard you're trying to quit. Thanks, friend. You're all hot. Now, what's this all about? Some idiot wrote a manifest for the Obia. Says I'm supposed to take eight passengers to Mexico. Yeah, I think I recognize that uh, idiot's handwriting. Looks like mine. Andy. The Mexicana has been overbooked by more than 100 passengers. Now we feel it's our obligation to lay them off on anything that'll float, including the Obia. They're expecting a luxury liner, Thurman, not a converted battle wagon. And you know damn right well that that ship is not fit to leave harbor. Our port engine's down with burnt valves. It'll take Simon two days to fix it when we get the parts. So we'll fly all the parts to Cozumel. You can install them when you lay over there. We are not laying over in Cozumel because we are not going to Cozumel. Andy, just get him there. We're transferring all your passengers in Cozumel. Forget it, pal. Just forget it. There's no way that I'm going to take that ship 800 miles across the Gulf of Mexico on one engine. Andy. The Obia is going to Mexico. Now, the question is, are you going to take her? Or am I going to have to put some ham-handed river jockey on the bridge of your ship? Because if I have to do that, you're never going to run a ship for this line again. Thanks, friend. Yeah, I am your friend. So now, what is it going to be? Are you going to take the Obia to Mexico? Or are you going to look for a job in the Bolivian Navy? You can board her now. God save my soul. Hello. Name's Karina, Mrs. But I call her the old sourpuss. <laughs> Oh, she's sweet. Does she belong to the ship? Oh, no, Mom. More like the ship belonged to her, Mrs. In fact, I think she's looking for somebody. Oh, isn't everyone? The Obia, Mrs. Not exactly the Queen Mary. Oh, that's okay, Nathan. I'm not exactly the Prince of Wales. Nathan? Yes, Mrs. We'll probably be running into each other quite a bit on this trip. So I'd like to get one thing straight right from the start. I am not Mrs. 
I have been un-Mrs. now for three weeks, five days, several hours, and I'm beginning to like the idea. Oh, then I call you un-Mrs. <laughs> right. And Nathan, since you are the social director, you be sure and direct some social my way. Ah, uh, you un-Mrs., that'd be easy. <laughs> Be careful, then, Maggie. Si, senor. No problem. Set them down carefully and be sure to count them. There should be nine. What's all this? Oh, uh, my luggage, my tools, practically my worldly possessions. You, I take it to Captain Andrews. How do you do? I'm Bakun, Dr. Isaiah Bakun. The doctor, we're not following Stanley into Africa. We're just going to Mexico. Yes, but you'll be leaving soon. I won't. I've been leaving your vessel in Cozumel for a much longer stay. You with one of the medical missions, Doctor? Well, no, I'm not that sort of a doctor, Captain. My patients are beyond medical help. I'm an archaeologist. Take two aspirins and call me in a thousand years, is that it? You might say so, yes. I'll give you a hand, sir. Thank you. Right down the gangplank. Thank you, Captain. Who picked this ship, Captain Bly? For the amount of money I'm paying, we could have the presidential suite. Oh, come on, honey, relax. It's only for a few days, and then we transfer to that floating palace I was telling you about. Yeah, and in a few days, my partner's capable of bringing a stock market crash all by himself. I don't know how I let you talk me into this cruise. Oh, come on, honey. Relax. Listen, we haven't had a vacation together in a long time. Forget about what's going on back home. If I could forget about what's going on at home, I wouldn't be thinking about it, right? Look, give me a little longer to unwind. Yeah. I've been giving you a little longer to unwind, Neil, for a long time now. It just seems like you have time for everything but me. Sandy, of all people, you should know how tough and demanding the brokerage business is. I can't flick a switch and forget about it. Listen, why don't I go topside and get us a couple of drinks? I think both of us can use one. Are you sure this is it, Jude? Well, it's Pier 32. This has got to be it. Doesn't look like much, does it? Well... Hmm. Looks pretty good to me. Good morning, ladies. You must be, uh... Judy Haynes. Hi, Debbie. Hello. Debbie Porter. Welcome to the OPM. I'm Simon McLean, first officer, pharmacist mate, and chief mechanic at your service. Hmm. Does that include room service? <laughs> well, that depends on whose room and what kind of service. Oh. Come on aboard. Sure. Here, let me get out. Ah. I know that this is only for three days, but... Well, the Obia may not be much of a looker, but uh, she's got a great personality. <laughs> Come on, I'll show it to your cap and you can freshen up. Hmm, freshen up what? <laughs> you are awful. Good morning, Reverend. Two more customers, Captain? Reverend Mather and his wife. Minister. Think he's come to save our souls? Does your soul need saving? <laughs> I'm afraid there's not that much left to save. Well, we'll do our best to save his life. Captain! 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 
Well, I missed the boat. Ship. As I said, I was on a different boat. I... Ship. Anyhow, all this confusion. Mr. Uh... Lazarus. Matt Lazarus got my transfer ticket. Wait. There's some place I know it. I think it's on the other boat. Can you hang on to this stuff? I'll just dash right... I'm afraid we haven't got time for that, Mr. Lazarus. We're late as it is. But I'll tell you what, you uh, come on board. As soon as we shove off, I'll radio for your verification. If you're not listed, we'll just throw you over. Just meeting and greeting some of the passengers. Uh, blonde or brunette? Uh, both. But I also hooked up that T-valve you wanted. I still don't like it, Andy. The best we can do on one engine is eight knots. There's something else that'll make you happy. Squalls. System's moving in from the southeast four to six knots. I figure we should have calm seas all the way to Desterada. Should. Andy, that storm picks up two knots. We'll never outrun it. And I suggest we shove off and get a good head start. Sun for some time. <laughs> Come on. Hey! <laughs> Now, that's sexy. What is it? It's a, uh, a circuit diagram of a computer that uh, generates a graphic display of the theoretical path of subatomic particles. They're called quarks. See, I guess I was absent that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are a physicist, sir? Well, well sort of. I'm, I'm really into mathematics, Professor Bakun. Well, you know me. My reputation, of course, and, and your new books on the Mayan Egyptian cross culturization. That's it. That's where I know you from. Dr. Isaiah Bakun, anthropologist, archaeologist, biblical scholar. This is an honor, sir. I'm afraid you're one of the few who think so. Well, surely, Professor, you don't mean that. You think not? I spent my entire life gathering proof that the ancient Egyptians sailed to Mexico 2,000 years ago and founded the Mayan civilization. But not one of my neo-Neanderthal colleagues will accept that theory. You must admit, Professor, that your theory runs uh, contrary to popular belief. Nonsense. 
Some years ago in Egypt, I found a piece of ancient papyrus which revealed that Cleopatra Silenus ordered a tomb built where the sun hits the sea. Now, my calculations prove that that tomb is on the island of Cozumel in Mexico, and I shall prove everything when I find that tomb. Now, why in the world would the Egyptians build a tomb halfway around the world from them? Well, that's right, Professor. Who's buried in that tomb? The important thing is to find that tomb. Now, as to who or what is buried in it, who knows? They knew who was buried there. Why else would they build a tomb so far away from Egypt? Has anyone seen Simon? I believe he's still working on the engine. Thank you. up in her cabin, wrestling with the brothers Karamazov, and the group up in the salon aren't exactly having a fun fest. Can I buy you a drink, sailor? That's one of the best offers I've had all day. I could make a better offer. I don't doubt it. <laughs> Give me a few minutes to finish. We'll go topside. I think that's the best place to start. <sighs> Hand me that screwdriver, huh? Thanks. Take the wheel. Tell the manual to put the launch on the deck till we get that davit fixed. Right, sir. The rest of you stay inside till that rail's repaired. So you help me get down. Walking accident, looking for some place to have her. Right, she's all right now. Why don't you go back to the salon? I'll stay with her. <sighs> Simon, I feel responsible. I mean, if anything happens to Nothing her... is going to happen. No one worse shape than she is. Go ahead, I'll meet you there. Thank you, Simon. I gave her a sedative. She's almost out. It wasn't an accident. Red eyes. Tried to push me overboard. She really thinks someone or something with red eyes tried to push her overboard. Believe that? She was there. I wasn't. 
but uh, those red eyes. You want to see red eyes? There's your red eyes. We're in the Macaro Straits. Those are channel bullies. A sailor, you know that. Were well, you trying to convince Skipper, you or me? Okay, okay. I was just kidding. She's high strung. I guess she got a little hysterical. See you later. I wanted to surprise you with something different. You're always surprising me with something different. And I love it. <laughs> I've waited so long to get you out of that office and onto this cruise. Hey, what's wrong? Oh, I don't know. I just suddenly thought of that little girl out there. And she could have been killed. Hey, she's all right. She's all right. Listen, why don't you go back in there and make another spectacular entrance? And then we'll uh, see where we can progress from there. Well, how about if I don't make another spectacular entrance and we see where we can progress from here? Where were you? I was talking to the captain about Debbie. Poor little thing, she's been through quite an ordeal. I believe I'll talk to her tomorrow. She seems like a lonely little soul. Yes, by all means, Charles. Counsel the lonely. Oh, no. I know how you feel. Do you? Yes, I do. You think it's my penance, my punishment. Those years I spent worshipping the bottle. But it's over, Lil. It's over. With this journey, the Lord's given me another chance. This journey? This obsession? No, it's his call. God's call. Don't you see that? Is it, Charles? Well, he didn't call me. for a change. Storm shifted to the west. We should be out of trouble. Good. Listen, uh, Nathan said some of the passengers want to go for a swim. Are we going to make our usual stop at the reef? Yeah, I guess we can swing that for a few hours. What about that engine? She's torn down as far as I can take her. I'll finish the valve job as soon as I get the parts at Cozumel. I don't need to think. It's so good to see you relapsing again. Yeah. I never realized how much I needed a break. Thanks for talking me into it. Professor. I don't criticize your book. When you wrote about the Great Pyramid of Giza, you forgot to mention that it was based on the exact mathematical ratio. So, the 
Mayans and the Aztecs had the value of pi, though the ratio wasn't officially discovered till middle of the 14th century. Well, go on. Well, if you measure the base of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the total number of inches is 36524. 365.24 are the exact number of days in the year. And the same number appears in the sacred Mayan circle at Chichen Itza. Hundreds of years before Western civilization even discovered that there were 365 days in the year. Which seems to support your theory that the Egyptian civilization preceded the Mayan. Matt, this papyrus I'm working on. I'd like you to look at it. Professor. My pleasure. <laughs> Get him away. What's the matter? Where to this? What the hell do you think you were doing? Sorry. Just wanted to help. Cocky. A hundred times we come to this reef. The man eating shark never come in this current. It's not his waters. Something wrong, Captain. Something wrong. agree that us uh, married women have a few things on those little nymphettes running around up there? I never disagreed. 
Oh, well, I saw the way you were looking at Judy and what's her name, Marilyn? Darling, just because I'm on a diet doesn't mean I can't look at the menu. Now hurry up and get dressed. I'm hungry. Oh, uh, just save room for dessert. Debbie. Now, come on. You can't just sit here in the cabin for the next two days. Will you get dressed? No. You go ahead. I'll be fine right here. You know, you're taking this whole thing much too personally. And that's ridiculous. How am I supposed to take it? Twice. I almost got killed twice. And we've only been out for two days. Well, you know, we were all in the water together. Debbie, I'm going to start feeling guilty if I go up to the salon and leave you sitting here alone. No, oh, no, no. You go ahead. At least one of us should have some fun. Well, now I am feeling guilty. You paid for my cruise, and I'm the only one having any fun. Would you please go up there? I may come up later, okay? You promise? Yes. You're going to try? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I expect to see you. <laughs> but, Professor... If your theory about the ancient Egyptians coming to Mexico is true, why haven't they found any Egyptian artifacts or relics by now? They've been digging and exploring in the Yucatan and Cozumel since the 1800s. My dear Reverend, if you'll go up on the deck, look at the sky, and find the planet Pluto, it's there, been there for millions of years. But why was it not discovered until 1930? I have no doubt that tomb exists in Cozumel. Afraid not, Professor. What are you talking about? These figures you gave me. Professor, if this papyrus is, as you say, genuine, and it is 2,000 years old, you're wasting your time looking for that tomb in Cozumel. The Earth's relationship to the sun and every other star in the sky is completely different now. According to my figures, that tomb, if it exists, is 41.7 miles north northwest of Cozumel, Mexico. Are you trying to tell me that that tomb is buried in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico? Not necessarily. According to your records, there must have been a small group of islands in that part of the Gulf. Where would these islands have been? Right here. Two degrees off our present course. Didn't the ancient pharaohs bury all kinds of valuables with their dead? Tons of them. Gold. Silver, you name it. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Captain. Now, <laughs> now that looks like a very exciting game. <laughs> but not half as exciting as our afternoon swim. Which reminds me, I never got a chance to thank you for your assist with our toothy friend. <laughs> Forget it. It's all part of the job. I do it twice a day just to break up my routine. <laughs> if you really want to break up your routine, Captain, this could be your lucky voyage. Oh, how's that? Well, a young whiz kid here. He just calculated that the professor's missing tomb is, uh, less than a day away from here. Really? Hey, Skipper, we'll be passing right near that position. Why don't we stop? That could be great. We could go on a treasure hunt. No. I'd have to wait for another trip. I think the captain is right. I shall hire a small boat when we get to Cozumel. I thought finding that tomb was your life ambition, Professor. I mean, here's a perfect opportunity to... The professor's discovery is too important to be treated as, a, as the young lady says, like a, like a treasure hunt. Too bad. Would have been exciting. Gotcha. Don't you ever knock? Hope you had a good night's sleep. You're an hour late. Well, I was on the entertainment committee last night. You know how that goes. Yeah. 
Oh, no, that storm's heading back in on us. That's right. This is strange. By the charts, we should be at 60 fathoms. According to the sonar and depth finder, we're only five fathoms deep. Well, maybe we're over a shelf of some kind. Why don't you go tell the passengers we'll be docking in Cozumel in under four hours. If they get their luggage ready, we'll be happy to transfer them to the Jamaican sun. It's the injector pump, the diaphragm shot. What are you talking about? We checked both of them before we left the port. They were as good as new. Listen, I didn't bust them. I can't even switch pumps, Andy. They're alternate side components. Well, yeah, just see what you can do. I thought we were only a few hours out of Casimel. How long a delay do you anticipate? Uh, it's a big job. It could take five or six hours, maybe more. Where are we anyway, Captain? About 40 miles north, northwest of Cozumel. Do be more specific. Well, if it means anything to you, we're 41.7 miles, 292 degrees magnetic. Captain, you stopped here deliberately. Now, I insist you get this ship moving at once. Look, I already told you, Professor, the engine... I'm sick and tired of your lame excuses. I want this ship moving. What is going on? I'll tell you what's going on. We're near your missing tomb, aren't we, Professor? Professor, I know how you feel, believe me. The exhilaration of proving something to yourself and to the world. Well, you could do it now. The tomb is down there and we can help you find it. Just think how foolish this will make your doubting colleagues feel. You're right. You're absolutely right. The proof of my theory is within my grasp. And you can get it for me. Captain, if we're going to be anchored here for a few hours. I'd like to go down and uh, take a look for the professor's tomb. Oh, so would I. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Oh, come on, Captain. It could be fun. You can come along with us, or you could send Simon. All right, I'll give you one hour. If Nathan Woo! is willing to go with you, Simon and I are going to be too busy. Now, that tomb, if it is down there, don't you think the dead should be allowed to rest in peace? I understand your feelings, Reverend. But I've waited for this moment all my life. That tomb belongs to us now. Make sure they fit nice and snug there. Okay, I'll put the mask on, make sure they reach plug. Oh, we really need all this stuff? <laughs> Uh, Nathan, all right, okay. shotgun behind you. No, thanks. This tomb business has got you spooked, huh? It's got me bugged, too. The tomb, the engines. I don't know, lady. There's more, isn't there? What makes you say that? Oh, I pick up on things. Sometimes I know what people are thinking even before they know. You're some kind of a witch? Well, some people might pronounce it a bit differently. But like I said, I do read minds. Yours looks like some pretty heavy reading. I'm afraid it's a very long and very boring story. Well, maybe that's just what I need, Andy. Somebody's long, boring story. I... I think I'd better go down and see how Simon's doing with that engine.
no doubt about it. An ancient Egyptian tomb plate. It's worth a fortune, right, Professor? And there's probably more of this stuff down there. It's warm. Just what I was looking for. Indisputable evidence that the ancient Egyptians came to Mexico. Now, all we have to do is find the sarcophagus. No! Don't go near it! Go back! Go back and tell the others to come up immediately! Hurry! Now! Reverend, this is really too much. You made your point about disturbing the dead, and we don't want to hear any more of your sermons. Doctor, look at that plate closely. It's marked all over with a hieroglyph of the serpent-headed bird. That's a warning symbol not to desecrate that tomb. Ancient superstition, you take it seriously. Really, this is very amusing. Is it? Now, in the year 1920, a group of British archaeologists led by Sir Richard Lyddenhurst uncovered the tomb of the pharaoh Ramses Amon Enk. There was a warning and a curse at the entrance to that tomb, which Sir Richard chose to ignore. He and his expedition entered the tomb despite the warning of the curse. Within three months, Sir Richard was dead. Within a year, 22 members of that expedition died violent deaths. Only one man survived, the Egyptian guide who wouldn't enter the tomb. Now let me tell you something. I've spent the better part of my life searching for this tomb. And now that I've found it, I'm not about to give it up because of some superstitious drip. This is not superstition. Dr. McCoon, now your own papyrus says that the tomb is to be opened every thousand years for inspection, right? So? What? A thousand years is a biblical millennium. It's a day when the forces of evil come forth to wage war against the forces of good. Reverend, I am a scientist. I do not believe in biblical fantasies. Listen to history, then, please. Now, you say that the Egyptians were the forerunners of the Mayans of Mexico. Now, history records that the entire Mayan civilization vanished suddenly around the year 1000 A.D., the very time the tomb was to be opened. An intriguing coincidence, I must admit. Is it a coincidence? Now, the next millennium is the year 2000. That's the time that the forces of evil will be at their full power. That tomb contains something evil, something waiting for the next millennium. And we will be responsible for letting it loose on the world. Now, I beg you, please, please don't do this. Sounds to me, Reverend, like you're trying to scare us off so we'll leave the sarcophagus where it is. Then you can come back and pick it up for yourself. No partners. It'll be very smooth. I'm a man of God, Mr. Barry. And more crimes and cruelties have been perpetrated in the name of God than any other source. Inquisitions, crusades, witch hunts. Dr. Bakun, this is not an inquisition. That's all right, Captain. Yes, I've had my own personal struggles with evil. Perhaps why I, that's why I've learned to fear it so much and sense its presence here now among us. Reverend, no disrespect would be reasonable. It's the 20th century, not the Middle Ages. If the sarcophagus turns out to be history's missing link, we owe it to the world to uncover it. I say we go for it. Yeah, and anything else that's down there. Well, Captain? We sail for Cosm, as soon as that engine is fixed. I'm afraid that's not going to be for a while, Skipper. It's going to be another six hours minimum before I can rig that pump. That is, if nothing else goes wrong. And we continue the dive.
Okay, that's got it.
buried under a thousand pounds of rock. Emmanuel. Lo siento mucho. Sí, yo también. Lo siento mucho. Guard. It blew. What blew? There was a short. The whole panel went up. The radio's dead. <sighs> so that's how you're going to do it. Take us one by one. Most innocent first. The whole thing's blown, Andy. We're on the emergency generator now for as long as that holds. That's great. No power, no radio. We're on standby electrical system. On top of that, we got a gale coming down on us. I'm telling you, Andy, I've been working ships all my life, and I've never seen two engines, both radios, and a main electrical system all go bust at the same time on the same ship. So what are you saying? I'm saying we got a Jonah on board. Now look, don't you start on me too. No, no, now listen to me, will you? First, the Mexicana overbooks, and we inherit some nutty professor. Debbie nearly falls overboard, a shark attacks. The engines go, Nathan's dead, and God knows what else. What would you call it? Coincidence? Everything you said can be explained. Oh, yeah? Then explain to me how you got talked into taking a crippled ship out in the first place. You especially, who would never agree. You already lost one ship and three passengers, and... Andy, I, I'm sorry, I... It's all right. Really, Andy, I'm sorry. After the engine's repaired, do you intend to continue on to Cozumel? That's right, one. We were talking about it before you came in. And we agree it'd be better if we return to the States. We see that sarcophagus and the artifacts we brought up, they're quite valuable. I mean, not only financially, but historically. And the Mexicans, well, they have some very strict national treasure laws. I understand, but that's not my priority. Especially the condition this ship is in. We're not gonna take unnecessary risks. We're closer to Cozumel, and that's where we're headed. Now hold it, Captain. Those artifacts are ours. And we're gonna keep them. We voted on it. This is a ship, Mr. Berry, not a convention. I'll decide where we'll sail. Now, let me enlighten all of you about maritime law. The moment that sarcophagus was salvaged, it became the property of this ship and the ship's owners. None of you have any stake in it at all. None of you. So don't worry about it. Shock. Just have to ride this one out. Well, we've done that before. Okay, let's secure for the storm. Put all the passengers on emergency standby. Hand out the hurricane lamps, the works. Andy, you'd better come down to the salon. They're gonna kill each other. Let's see. You fool! You're not throwing that thing overboard. Now, if you don't want your share, that's all right with us. You don't realize what you're saying. 
We must destroy it now before it's too late. It's killed one man, it'll kill all of us. All right, now what's going on? We're in even more danger than I thought, Captain. We must get rid of that now, before the seal is broken on the lid. Now hold it. Now what's the emergency, Reverend? I know who's in that sarcophagus, Captain. It's him. It's the son of the evil one, the son of Satan. You expect us to believe that? You above all, Dr. Bacon. Now, your papyrus said that the child in that coffin was born in the year 1 AD. At the same time, another child was born in Bethlehem. God sent his son to save the world. Who sent this one? Who do you think is in that sarcophagus? Then why don't we open it up and find out? No! No, no. No, this... No. Look, in the key of Solomon, it's written, where 12 souls gather, the child of Satan shall be lifted from his bindings on Midsummer's Eve. One of those present is his guardian who will raise the child to adulthood. The others will suffer unbearable torment and death. Reverend, if what you say is true, then this guardian of Satan's child would have to be one of us. He is one of us. Oh, come on, Reverend. By your own quote, you said 12 people had to gather. And counting Nathan, 13 people came aboard this ship. I didn't say 12 people, I said 12 souls. There is someone among us without a soul. Devil's guardian or that spooky minister? Don't joke about it. Oh, Debbie. How long have I known you? Don't you remember I was the big senior and you were the freshman squirt? Now, did I ever let anything happen to you? No. Okay. Well, no one's gonna mess with you now. Not the devil or his so-called guardian. But what if we don't recognize him? You heard what the Reverend said. He could be any one of us. He, he, who is he? He doesn't exist. He is a myth. Come on, Debbie, don't worry about it. No one's gonna hurt you. Something, lady, you're crazy. Well, let's see if we can find you a dry dock. Now, that sounds interesting. It was Providence that put me aboard this ship. Providence that directed me, me, to face it. The adversary of mankind. So obvious to me now, little. God is pitting me against the supreme evil. Think of that. He's chosen me. He's allowing me this chance to redeem myself. For all those years when my faith had abandoned me. All those years. I won't fail him again this time. On Midsummer's Eve. I'm going to find Satan's guardian on board this ship 
And I'm going to defeat him and that insidious child that he's come to protect. What's wrong, Lou? Nothing, Charles. Nothing that hasn't been wrong for the past 22 years of our holy marriage. Evil has come aboard this ship, but we can win if we fight it. If we fight it, we can win together. Oh, Mila, pray with me now. Oh, pray you with me. Pray. My whole life has been a prayer. One long, unanswered prayer. So many years, I've prayed that you would notice me as a woman you would care for me. Those women up there, I called them sinners, but what I really wanted was to be like them. You don't know what you're saying. To be touched, caressed, to be made love to. Yes. To be made love to, even in lust, is better than never being loved at all. Phil, you're wrong. I love you. How could you? You're too much in love with your suffering, your torment, your need to be holy. Well, you go on, Charles, and pray. Pray for the strength to fight your devil. Go on, pray. And I'll pray for what I need. Everybody depends on me to make decisions. The right decision, and I'm not making them. I'm just not making them. Nathan's death was not your fault. Fault? What a convenient word. I had choices to make. Decisions. I made the wrong ones. And you don't do this to yourself. You don't deserve it. When I was a little girl, my father taught me a poem. That there is a devil. There is no doubt. But is he trying to get in us? Or trying to get out. Let your devil out, Andy. Let him out.
you're the one. Aren't you? I'm whoever you want me to be. hysterical, Captain, everything that's happened. What about those words she was babbling? I've never heard any language like that before. Well, we've all been to this Egyptian stuff. She must have picked a phrase out of one of those books and buried it in her subconscious. No. No. It was him. The evil one. Wasn't it, Dr. Bucco? I'm... I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't feel... I think perhaps I'm a little overcome by this storm. Please excuse me. We could all use a little rest. Captain, Satan's guardian. We must find him. My wife is in that. Listen, there is no... Do listen. listen. How long are you going to ignore what you know is true? Now, Satan's child is in that sarcophagus. Satan's guardian is walking among us. Reverend... Captain, that... it's begun. One by one, he's going to take us all. Your personal reasons are no concern to me. As long as you help me keep that sarcophagus on board until midnight tomorrow. That's the devil's time, Midsummer's Eve. The only time I can defeat him. You do whatever hocus pocus you want. All I want is to get that thing back to the States in one piece. And you do anything to double cross me. I promise you'll meet your maker before you're ready. Again. Happy. And 
how do you plan to work that miracle? We're a little old to find happiness on a beach in some sleeping bags like a couple of hippies. Happiness has a price tag, Sandra. It costs money. We have all the money we need. Nobody has all the money they need. that keeps you away for 16 hours a day. And the business trips for weeks on end. Poor, poor neglect Sandra. Still acting like a teenager. Now when are you gonna grow up and face the real world? You. What's happening to us? All I ever wanted was for us to love each other. Love? want to know what love is? Well, I'll show you what love is. release you. That was your plan, wasn't it? You've haunted me for 30 years, but no more. It's all over now. It's all over! the weather might hold until we can get out of here. Emmanuel, check the lamps and the emergency pumps. You get down to that engine. I don't care if you have to use rubber bands and bicycle parts. I want us moving. Poor old man. Everything he's lived for. Him? What about us? We're all going to die, every one of us. Now, nobody else is going to die or get hurt as long as we stay calm and stay together. No. That thing is gonna kill us all. That thing had nothing to do with any of this. You're wrong, Captain. That sarcophagus is responsible for every misfortune that's befallen us. Please, can't we just throw that thing overboard? No! It's too valuable. Now listen to me, all of you. There's a logical explanation for everything that happened. Ships break down, there are diving accidents every day. And the professor? An accident. You don't really think that, do you? You're just as frightened as the rest of us. You bet I'm frightened, mister. And it doesn't matter what I think. What I know is we stay calm and we stick together. 
Now, from now on, I don't want anybody on this ship going anywhere alone. Is that understood? Ah, uh, then you do think that he's on board. Yes. Yes, I do. But he's not in that sarcophagus, and he's not one of us. He's all of us. Including me. Now what are you talking about? Think about it, Mr. Berry. That's the one thing none of us have taken the time to do, I think. Well, if there is a devil, Satan, whatever you want to call him, he's not out there. He's in here. In all of us. And his name is greed and fear and all the ugly things that each of us can ever face. That is your devil. No, he's real. And he's right in that sarcophagus. Don't come off it. Now, look, I have had enough of that. Now, we're going to get that engine working, the radio fixed, and we're going to get to Cozumel by late tonight. Until then, I want each of you to stay in your cabins. There'll be no more accidents on my ship. to do it. Now, if there are ships in the neighborhood, this could be our only chance of getting out of here alive. You don't have a choice. Okay. But stay with me, please. I can't stay out here alone. I'm scared, Judy. I don't care if you're scared. You're always scared. Well, I am sick of it, and I'm sick of you. Judy, don't say that. Why? Please. Why? Can't you stand the truth? What are you talking about? I am talking about always following me around, bribing me with trips and cruises. Well, I don't rub off. So why don't you just accept who and what you are? Who am I? I don't know and I don't care, but you're not me. And I am sick to death of trying to help you become something you're not. Now leave me alone. Judy, don't go, please. Debbie. Don't worry. There's nothing to worry about now. He's gonna be all right. You're safe with me. Come on, Neil. The captain wants us all back in our cabins. Sarcophagus. Don't you understand? Look what it's doing to you. Doing? This is our whole future. It's your future, Neil, not mine. Sandra?
Forget it. Forget what? I fixed the fuel pump. And? And the engine seized. Frozen. I can't get it to turn over. I don't believe it. Okay, Andy. I can take the launch, make the coast in three, four hours. All right. Get a manual to give you a hand. Right. Get dressed, get ourselves a cup of coffee, then I'll tell the passengers. You don't trust anyone, do you? No, not when it comes to several million dollars. When it comes to your life, would you trade that for the sarcophagus? trying that same devil's guardian stuff. Well, I didn't buy it from the minister, and I don't buy it from you. I just want to see who I'm dealing with. No, you can't stop me! Lil! Lil, you don't know what you're doing. You've got to fight this evil within you. Fight it. It's not evil. It's human. I'm human. All those years, didn't I know you? No, you never did. Are you the one? Are you the guardian? No, Reverend. She's not the guardian. Her name is Lil. She's what she says. Human. Human feelings and emotions. You never knew her, Reverend. You were too busy with your holy mission. You'll never know what you missed. Too bad. She's really quite a woman. You. You're. You're Satan's guardian. Am I? Does he even exist? You'll never know, Reverend. That takes more faith than you'll ever have. No! of the evil one. He is not. Now listen to me, all of you. Simon's taking the launch to Cozumel. We'll have help within a few hours, so just sit still. No! We need that launch for the sarcophagus. Look. Look in his cabin. He's protecting the sarcophagus. He's the one. Get moving. Reverend, we're taking the sarcophagus. We're taking it where it's safe. As long as I've got breath in my body, you and it will never be safe. on deck. Emmanuel, get those gas cans on the launch. I'm, uh... I'm sorry what I did to you. Get out 
out of my way, Reverend. Don't. The devil child must be destroyed, and you along with it. You came from the flames of hell, and to the flames of hell you will return. <laughs> keep hearing over and over again that there is a devil there is no doubt but is he trying to get in us or trying to get out mm -hmm. 